This week I'll show you the five apps I always use when I go out and shoot the stars. Now we're firmly into the Milky Way season and last night I was out shooting the stars with a group of friends and this got me thinking about the apps that I use from the planning stages right through to when I'm underneath those stars taking photographs. So I thought I'd show you the five apps that I use all the time. On a side note, these apps are actually really good for just general photography. So if you don't shoot the stars, these still can come in handy. I think one of them is a paid app and all the other ones are free. But if you use all of these, you can very quickly work out where you're gonna be able to shoot the night skies and where you're gonna get some really good shots. On another side note, I've only had about an hour's worth of sleep. So if I look tired, that's the reason why. We got a little bit carried away last night and we ended up shooting until the sun rose. And this is one of the things with astrophotography. You will get carried away and because of the long exposures, you'll end up shooting all night. So make sure you plan properly and make sure you give yourself enough time to take all the photographs that you want. So once you've found a really good dark location near you, on websites like lightpollutionmap.info, there are other things that you need to take into consideration before heading out. So first of all, to see the stars, you need clear skies. You could watch the weather forecast or use other online tools, but for where I've lived so far, AccuWeather seems to be a really good app to give you a really good detailed forecast. You get an in-depth three-day forecast and then a more generalized seven-day forecast. You can put in any location and it'll give you a forecast for that location. This is the first app that I go to when I want to see what the weather is doing in the location that I'm going to be at when I'm planning a photo shoot. There are quite a few adverts in the app, but I don't worry too much about those. I just ignore those. And then you come down to the bottom and then you have a daily forecast. If you click on any of these, it'll show you what it's gonna be in the day and what it thinks it's gonna be at night. There's a lot more to this app, but I generally just use what's on the front page. All I need to know is whether the nights are gonna be clear or not. Clear Outside is another weather forecasting app, but it has tons more detail in the actual forecast. The one thing I really like about this app is it breaks up the different cloud levels so you know whether it's gonna be low cloud or high cloud. You also have the lunar cycle, the Bortle scale, when it's actually gonna be nighttime. So you can see along the top here, you've got sunlight as it goes into the golden hour, the blue hour, twilight and actual dark. Also, if the International Space Station is transiting through your sky, it'll show you on this app as well, where it says ISS. So in this app, I tend to look at the cloud and where it's gonna be in the sky, whether it's gonna be high cloud, low cloud, and also it has a percentage. So you can work out whether it's gonna be a completely overcast sky, or whether it's gonna be patchy, or whether it's gonna clear up. The other thing that I look at is visibility. And this comes down to air quality. I do have an app that I use for air quality, but I also check it on here to cross-reference it. But there's loads of information in Clear Outside, and it's a really good app and well worth downloading. One other thing that I've just realized about it is that you can put actual coordinates into the location and then it'll give you the forecast for that actual location. Sometimes you can look in forecasts online and it'll give you a generalized forecast, but this gives you a much more localized forecast. Now this is a paid app, but I think it's really well worth the investment. You get so much information in the app that it really helps your photography along the way. Photo Pills can do so much, and it's one of those apps you just have to start using to actually get your head around. For astrophotography, in the planning stage, I will check the moon cycle, so I don't have the moon bleaching out my shots. Then when I know the days I can go out and shoot, around the time of the new moon is usually the best, then I'll plan the shoot around these days. So this correlates really well with clear outside. You can see I've got the sunrise, the sunset, and I've got about 7.1% of the moon showing at this moment in time. You also have the time at which the Milky Way core becomes visible in the sky at that location and when it drops back below the horizon. The other great thing with PhotoPills is that it's got augmented reality. So this means if you click on this little AR button at the bottom, it'll show you where the moon is in its cycle. So you can see at the moment, it's directly above us. 
When you're using this AR function, people may look at you a little bit strange and it might look like you're taking weird angled selfies, but it's a really good tool and don't worry about that. It's well worth using and it's well worth looking like a bit of an idiot. The next bit I'll use for astrophotography is the night AR. So if you scroll to the bottom, you'll have night AR. And what this will do is it'll actually show you where the Milky Way is in the sky. So when you're planning a location, you can use this to see exactly where the Milky Way is going to be in the sky and its orientation. One other thing with this night AR function is that if you click on settings on the top corner, you can change your position and you can change the date. So say if you're planning a shoot when there's a new moon, you can plug the information in here and you can put in the position that you're going to be at. And then it'll show you where the Milky Way is going to be in the sky at that time. So this is a really great function and a really great tool for you to plan your shots properly. If you want to learn more about photo pills, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description. This will take you to another of my videos. Now, one thing I don't hear people talk about too much in astrophotography tutorials is the air quality. This really affects what you can see in the night sky. I've been out in some places where there's a lot of haze and dust in the air, and it really does bleach out the stars. And any light pollution from any towns nearby really does bounce off this haze and causes the stars to be less visible in the night sky. The app that I use to check out the air quality is called Plume. So if I click on that, it'll give you an air report. Like with all of the other apps, you can choose your location. So I'm in Dubai at the moment and it shows me the air quality. It's a little bit hazy and dusty. I think the wind's blowing off the desert at the moment. I think the humidity is a little bit high as well. And sometimes this causes there to be a lot more haze in the air. So if I type in Wanaka into this Plume app, you can see it says fresh. And this is a great air quality to have to take photos of the night sky. The only downside to New Zealand is that you get lots of storms coming over. So you've got to bide your time and wait for a clear sky. In this app, as long as you have moderate to fresh air conditions, it's really good for taking photos of the stars. Once you've planned your shoot and you're actually out underneath the stars, Skyview is a really good app to work out what stars you're actually looking at. There are so many different stars, constellations, and planets that sometimes it's hard to work out what is what. Now with Skyview, this shows you exactly what is what. Now I have the light version and there is also a paid option. This is a really good learning tool and it teaches you so much about the stars. So if you hold it up, you can see lots of different constellations and stars and planets. With exposures between 15 and 30 seconds, and then if you're using a tracker up to about four minutes, you do have a lot of time where you're waiting around. So the Skyview app is really good for learning what's in the night sky above you. And that's about it. As you can see, there's so much to think about when planning an astrophotography shoot, from when it's gonna be a new moon to when the weather is gonna be clear, the air's gonna be good, and also what's gonna be in the sky above you. With these five apps, it can make the process a lot easier and a lot more simple. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.